the Electoral College. Now, when you go to vote, you choose your candidate and you cast your ballot. And so do a whole bunch of other people in your region. The votes from your region are counted along with a whole bunch of other regions that make up the state vote. Now, the votes from the state are counted by direct election, meaning whoever wins more wins the entire state. Now, each state receives one electoral vote for each representative in Congress, meaning two votes for each state because each state has two senators and one vote for every representative from each state. Therefore, small states such as North Dakota or Wyoming only have three votes, whereas big states like Texas gets 38 votes or California 55 votes. In total, this makes for 538 electoral votes, meaning that a candidate needs to win 270 or more of these to become President of the United States of America. Now, I bet you might be wondering at this point, why mess with the Electoral College? I mean, why go through all the hassle when people know how to vote for themselves? Well, the founders had several reasons for implementing the Electoral College. First, it prevents mob rule, which was one of the founders' greatest fears as they established our country. Second, it preserves federalism by giving each state an important part to play in the national elections. Third, it promotes political stability by encouraging a two-party system. And lastly, it prevents regional candidates from winning and guarantees that whoever becomes president must have a majority of the entire country supporting him. Now, you might still be wondering though, isn't there another way that we could do the same things and maybe do it a little more efficiently? Well, several alternatives to the Electoral College have been proposed. The first one is the simplest, direct election. Whoever wins the majority of the popular vote becomes president. This is clearly a much simpler option, but it has the risk that the founders feared of leading to mob rule. Another alternative would be the proportional plan, in which each state's electoral votes are divided according to the percentage of the popular vote in each state. We'll explain a little more later, but as you can see from me trying to explain it, this plan is confusing. Also, this plan can often lead to ties and disputed elections, which is really not preferable either. The next alternative would be the bonus plan, which in an effort to make the electoral vote line up better with the popular vote, awards a 102 electoral vote bonus to the winner of the popular election. This sounds like a good idea, but in practice, this results in the exact same thing as if we just went with a direct election. And one more alternative would be the district plan. This plan is actually already in use in Maine and Nebraska. We'll use Nebraska for our example here. In this plan, the winner of each congressional district, of which Nebraska has three, wins the electoral vote from that district. Then the two votes from the Senate are awarded to the winner of the state's popular election. Now this plan has the same problem as some of the others. It's kind of confusing. And while it may work on a state-to-state -state basis, it's unlikely to be used by the entire country. So we won't be looking at this one a whole lot more in the rest of our discussion. Now, in order to see which plan works better of these three best ones, the Electoral College, the Direct Election, and the Proportional Plan, we need to go look at some of the past elections and see how they would have been different under each system. First, in the 2012 election, you already know that President Obama won the Electoral College, that's why he's the president. And he also won by a decent margin if we had used a direct election. And he would have won in, in a proportional election as well, but by a much closer margin. Then, going back to 2008, Barack Obama wins with an even larger majority in the Electoral College, and in a direct election, and a larger margin in the proportional election as well. Now, 2004 was a much closer election. However, Bush still wins in the Electoral College and in the direct election, and he would have won in a proportional election as well. Now, if we go back to the election of 2000, things really start to get interesting. As you probably know, George Bush won the Electoral College vote, but he did not win the popular vote and therefore the direct election. And under a proportional election, nobody wins. That's right. 
no person has a majority of the Electoral College, which means this one's a tie, which is even a bigger mess than we had to begin with. For another interesting election, if we go back to 1996, Bill Clinton wins solidly in the Electoral College, and he wins solidly in the direct election as well. But if we had used a proportional election, nobody wins a majority. 1992 had almost the same result as the 1996 election. Once again, Clinton dominates in the Electoral College, and he wins solidly in the direct election as well. But just like four years later, Perot prevents Clinton from winning in a proportional election. Are you starting to notice a potential problem with this plan? Now, 1988's election was pretty straightforward. George H.W. Bush wins solidly in the Electoral College and in the popular vote and in the proportional plan as well. Now, finally, if we look at 1984's election, it doesn't even matter what system we look at. No matter how we look at it, Ronald Reagan wins. He dominated the Electoral College and the direct election and wins in the proportional plan as well. So we could go on looking at many more years of elections and we could probably spend many more years looking at elections. But I think we've seen enough to draw some conclusions. First, most elections have the exact same result no matter what system we use. Second, the Electoral College consistently does show a clear winner of each election, unlike the proportional plan. And finally, since no system can be shown to be significantly better than the Electoral College, we should probably keep what we have. I mean, it seems to work pretty well most of the time. But most importantly, your vote does still count, no matter what system we're using. So, get out there and go vote.